Hey, my name is Victor, and tonight I'm gonna to show you how to make a sirloin steak dinner, very simple, with some uh, pan-roasted potatoes, and uh, I'm excited to get started, so I hope that uh, you're ready for the ride. The whole idea is like eating on a budget, or eating well on a budget doesn't have to suck. It's my whole idea. Uh, but I don't know how to make it concise, so, you know, throughout this experience, you know, and you guys get to know me more, like, tell me what you think should be a name, and then I'll use it. Because I want to start doing vlogs and stuff online. Um, and the whole point is, like, I enjoy what I do, and I think it's so easy. And I think that uh, for, like, our generation stuff, not many people are cooking enough. You know, we're always, like, going out and stuff. But really, when you think about it, once you learn how to cook, like, uh, I learned how to make, make pad thai, which I really love. It's like, oh, seven dollars, ten dollars, such a bargain. No, I make it for three dollars, and, uh, and I'm just thinking about that. So now, every time I go to a restaurant, I see pad thai for like twelve dollars. I'm like, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's that's kind of the the deal. Um, so I think going back to the ratio thing, if uh, we're we're talking about that, yeah, once you start looking at uh, recipes and, and 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 watching more cooking uh, shows. You find that you know you don't have to follow ingredients, ingredient lists like precisely, um, because everybody's taste buds can be different. So the number one tip that uh, all chefs use is um, always taste your food. You know, clean spoon every time though. You know, don't just like be sitting there like, oh good, and then dipping the same spoon in. I don't do that at least. Uh, but yeah, so taste and then adjust. Um, and and you know you might not know what you're doing at first. Who cares? experiment and, and try and then eventually you're gonna get more confident more confident and cooking is gonna be like a breeze um, there will always be new things to learn but the, the things that you always should remember is like ratios and how, how flavors complement uh, one another so going back to that whole uh, bit a minute ago about um, teriyaki sauce the ratio is one to one to one so I know that it's um, one part uh, sweetener any sort of sweetener you know you can use sugar you can use brown sugar you can use honey depending on you, and then uh, one part soy sauce and one part mirin, which is a rice wine, uh, cooking rice wine that you can buy at any HEB. So you get all that and you put it together in the pan and you kind of let it cook out and it thickens. Any vegetarians in the house? Thank, I mean like vegetarians are great. I just, we're making steak and I'm just like, huh. I actually have been eating tofu um, last couple weeks a lot because tofu was on sale at um, HEB. And um, I just bought a block, and one night I decided to just like fry some up and make it crispy, and then toss in an orange sauce, and basically I just consumed the whole block of tofu, uh, but and that was my meal. And so you guys can be more creative. Uh, but that goes to another point, though, uh, is shopping for your food. So um, when you're shopping, you can always. I don't know, in, in marketing they teach you to look at unit pricing, so don't always look at like whatever the price label is. If you want to really get more for your money, you're going to look at how much it, uh, the, the product is per unit. So um, for instance, meat you're looking at like uh, per pound, right? So if this is a, oh, $7 for a tray of um, sirloin or ribeye steaks, but then you know um, it's uh, $16 for hamburger meat, but then you realize that the unit price, you can get so much more for the other piece, depending on what you want. Always look at unit pricing and compare it that way. Um, right off the bat, I used to use my calculator, but then now I get to the point where it's like, once you learn about your grocery store, you can, you can know, oh, that's a good deal, or that's not. Um, unit pricing, uh, veggies, you know, uh, I can, share with you guys once once we finish this I'll leave like my contact info or something you can always shoot uh, messages at me and, and I'll, I'll share what I know but um, as far as veggies go you kind of go through and you, you same same idea um, lately I've been battling the the two things where it's like do I want to buy fresh produce that's not been prepared yet because it's cheaper or do I want to buy the already prepared because for me I'm working like 60 hours a week so I'm thinking, huh, well, I get it now. So you got to think about what your time is worth too. Um, but if you can get to a point where I can prepare this, I can triple wash it, chop it up, get ready, done. That's fine. Um, so that was like, I, I kind of went on a tangent, but y you know, from where, where uh, you said you wanted to learn more about steak. So um, I'm going to give the floor back to you guys to uh, yeah, continue like, having a conversation. So I'm not dominating the whole thing. So the question was, um, 
what do you like one thing that you really want to get out of this experience? I mean, you're here with your time, and so I want to honor it. Maybe like different ratios or seasoning combinations. For, okay, cool. That are good for different things. Cool. Yeah. Tell us more about what we're going to cook. Okay, cool. So um, tonight we're going to do an easy sirloin steak if we have the sirloin steak. And the reason why I chose sirloin instead of like a nicer cut is um, because the whole point is eating well on a budget, right? A sirloin is leaner than ribeye, um, but you know, in meat, Fat is what really gives it flavor. So if you're cooking for uh, friends and stuff and you're afraid of messing the, the food up or it's too dry, always buy the fattier meat. So you, you know, ribeye is so good because it has like fat running through the meat and on the side and it's just like full of flavor. Whereas if you're cooking for yourself, you want to be a little bit healthier, uh, sirloin is great because it's lean. You can still get some that has um, uh, sort of like a, some fat running through it. It's called marbling and uh, that'll just cook through as you're cooking and it kind of um, makes it the steak juicy from the inside out. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna do a very simple seasoning, uh, which is my favorite combination. When in doubt, I just use these three things. Um, it is salt, uh, black pepper, and garlic powder. Uh, very, very cool, and you, you basically just season both sides pretty well. Uh, steaks, usually buy it at least, at least an inch thick because if you buy it thinner, it's hard to make it to your liking. So um, as I show you in there in the kitchen, uh, there are uh, several different methods you can use to figure out what the doneness of the steak is without cutting it. Because when you cut into a steak to check if it's done, all the juices just basically come out of the steak and then you're left with a dried piece of meat. So um, it's a touch test. Uh, the one thing that I like is I, I use this trick where uh, you kind of feel uh, the inside of your hand right here. And uh, basically you compare this part of your hand to the meat. Uh, the springiness, how fast does your, this part of your hand kind of come back when you push onto it. So uh, your index finger is uh, medium rare, your middle finger is medium, medium, and then your uh, ring finger is medium well, and then of course pinky is well done. You can see how as you progress up, it becomes tougher. So right now my uh, medium rare, I push onto it, and then it comes back slower than as if I push here, because it's like super firm now. And you can basically touch your steak when you're cooking, and if it just like, you know, it springs back slowly, you know, hey, it's done. Um, to your liking, of course. Another note to make about your steak is that um, it's gonna continue cooking once you take it off the heat. So, you know, if you want medium uh, rare, or let's say medium, because then you can compare uh, medium, then I would take it out when it's about medium rare, because it's gonna continue cooking. And when you cook a steak, you let it rest. You don't just take it off the stove and eat it right away. Same idea as cutting into it, all the juice is gonna come out. So you're gonna let it kind of rest. Let's say you cook the steak for um, seven minutes. Uh, kind of let it rest uh, the same amount of time it cooked, but you can put some foil over it, keep the heat on. But in that time, the, the meat will just relax and all the juice will kind of redistribute again. So you have a nice juicy steak and it's gonna be pink um, the way you like it. I like mine medium and uh, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll be serving it with potatoes. Um, basically, I was thinking like eating healthy, you can do it. Basically, you can get spinach, you can buy salads, right? Spinach you can uh, easily wilt uh, in a, a pan. You don't need any oil, you don't need water even. Let it sit in the pan um, and then, well, maybe a touch of water depending on um, and, you know, how dry the pan is. And you just uh, keep it on medium heat and it just kind of wilts. And then from there you season it with whatever you like. You can eat that with your steak. Um, but I decided tonight to show you how to put something together if you have friends coming over, right? And you're like, oh, well, maybe they don't want to be healthy like me. So um, tonight I'm doing like a, a nice version of um, potato chips, but you're doing it in a pan. It's not going to be like your crispy potato chips that you get elsewhere. It's going to be a little bit thicker, but the whole idea is that it's quick. You're going to slice these potatoes pretty thinly, put in the pan, cook it on each side till it kind of gets uh, golden, and then you season it. And the seasoning I like to use for it, uh, does, do we have any Wingstop lovers? So do you guys like their fries? Yeah, yeah so the seasoning is going to be like that. Uh, I'm going to use uh, paprika, I'm going to use um, some uh, garlic powder, I'm going to use salt, uh, and a pinch of sugar. That's the secret, that's why I like Wingstop fries. And something you can really do is once you finish cooking the steak, you have like things that are stuck to the bottom of the pan. Um, and that's really cool because that's like flavor. And you can do what's called um, deglazing the pan. 
So you'll, you'll get some sort of liquid and then it'll just, um, you'll pour it in. So I like to finish mine with red wine. So I put red wine into the pan. This is if you want to get fancy. Uh, you, you'll put in some red wine, you put in uh, some butter and you just kind of start scraping the bottom of the pan and all that flavor come back up. Um, and then you just kind of let the sauce reduce. Reduce just simply means to thicken. And uh, basically you reduce by half, meaning you know, half the liquid in there. It'll just kind of evaporate and becomes like the sauce that you pour over your uh, meat. Hot pan. Steak, any sort of meat you cook, you always want sort of a hot pan uh, because if your pan's not hot enough and you put the meat in there and you don't hear the sizzle right away, your meat's gonna boil. So if you put in a steak into a pan and then it's just there, it's not like sizzling, it's just gonna become brown gray and just the you want it to really have that heat so it can caramelize and, and form the crust outside so any other random thoughts just throw it out we're a family you guys are going to be comfortable with each other by the time this is done at least that's my goal how do you cook tofu right so it depends on what you like so i like mine sort of fried and crispy on the outside but then you know nice on the inside kind of like uh chicken nuggets right so um, if you're going to do tofu, they come in boxes. You drain all the water and you make sure you dry out your tofu. That's how I do it. You dry it out with napkins because uh, there's going to be water left inside the tofu. And if you fry it, just, it's just going to blast everywhere. So uh, make it easier on yourself and dry the tofu, then slice it. I like to just do mine about um, an inch thick in real rectangles. And um, then you know, kind of throw it onto the pan uh, with oil and then um, kind of just fry each side. A uh, cool note on that is that there are different oils for different uh, things you cook. So if you're gonna do high heat stir fries, olive oil is not your friend. Um, couple reasons, I mean, uh, it really starts creating free radicals, uh, which is bad for you whenever you get it to smoke smoke. Um, that's not what olive oil is meant to be for. And um, each oil has its own smoking point. So if you don't want to set your fire alarm off in your apartment or whatnot, uh, a good oil to deep fry and stir fry with uh, is uh, grapeseed oil. Um, then peanut oil is fine too. Those are high heat. Uh, and then olive oil is for what we're going to do tonight. And uh, olive oil is good for, I mean, even salad dressings. So that's how I do tofu. I fry it all, then I drain it off like you deep fried something. And then really you can toss in whatever sauce you want. Um, I like to do this soy, honey, uh, chili flakes one. Well, that's kind of, it's nice. <laughs> and, and, and tonight's uh, rest of tonight, if we're ever going to get around to cooking it, uh, you can kind of apply the same seasoning and technique to uh, other meats. Mine is like the touch thing because you don't want your chicken medium rare or rare. you want your chicken well done. Otherwise, you're just going to like have it with the side of salmonella um, and it's not tasty in any way. Um, cross contamination is a big deal. You don't ever want to um, mix raw meats and food with uh, anything that's um, not meat. So you want different workstations, even at home. If you're going to cut pork and stuff, whatever, on a cutting board, you make sure you wash your hands all the time. After you handle raw meat, you always wash your hands. And then um, you just kind of leave wherever you're, you're touching meat and stuff. You just leave that on the side. Woohoo! Should we clap? I don't know. <laughs> yeah! Cool. Um, but raw meats never like let it touch other things. Uh, several reasons, like you know, you're gonna get all those. There, there's like uh, bacteria that can grow from there and then it just manifests itself. Even if you're like cooking it all, you still want to keep things separate. Um, you don't want to, that's, so that's a big deal. When you're cutting, uh, I'll show you guys, will we, yeah, we'll do some cutting tonight. There's a rule, um, it's like a three finger rule. And this is, if you do this correctly, you'll never cut yourself, right? Um, well, you'd be less likely to. So it's middle finger in front, um, two other fingers in back, and then th the pinky finger is always going to be your uh, anchor point and thumbs kind of guiding. So if you're cutting, your blade's going to be like, it can kind of follow through with the, the, uh, your, your middle finger. So you, but you never want to do it like this. You always want to kind of tuck it in a little bit, have the other, and it holds it down. It gets weird uh, to kind of get used to, but once you get this down, you just like, all the way through. So. Okay, so uh, I believe these are sirloin cuts that they've already cut out. Um, and just like we discussed a while ago, we're going to go ahead and dig in. Uh, I'll show you guys how to season the steak and, and make it first. Feel free to stop me and ask questions. Um, and then what we can do is I'll also prep the potatoes. 
um, so that it's ready to go. Because uh, I'm going to show you how to cook two things at the same time. So when you're in the kitchen, you always want to be efficient. When you come home from work, you're studying, uh, it's, it's just going to be better for you to just, after you eat, just kind of rest, right? So a lot of things I like to do is, while I'm cooking, whatever the food's doing over there, I clean up as I go. And so uh, I'll show you that. Uh, we don't have a chef's knife, so I'm using a kitchen knife. But if you're at home uh, and wherever you guys are, just make sure you have a, a pretty reliable knife. Yeah, I'm such a beast. Cool. So you're going to find that this is pretty simple. That does not look very appetizing when you take it out of packaging like that. But it's going to be delicious. I'm going to throw this away in the sink for now. OK. Uh, very easy. So this hand is going to be the hand that's going to be working with the meat. The other hand's going to stay clean. Um, usually, let's see, this is about eight ounces. Uh, I like to, you, you know that beef, you know, the steak, this, this beef steak is going to be relatively thick. So you don't have to worry too much about over seasoning. Um, and also, generally, you lose about 30% of your seasoning in the pan. So uh, for this, I usually kind of use, let's, let me make an estimate of maybe half to one teaspoon, maybe half to three quarter teaspoon of salt per side. So, and I like to get it there. Um, and then I like to get garlic powder. And you're going to do it to both sides, too. So you know what? I have a better idea for this. Thanks. So uh, mankind actually invented something a long time ago called a spoon, which is what I should have done in the first place. Look at that. Uh, black pepper. Not too much. Uh, just enough to coat steak. Pat on that side. Let me dump that back in. Get the other side, um, but the salt, I'm gonna, left the spoon there because I know my raw meat's here, so. Oh cool, this way I can measure things out too. Uh, about a teaspoon. Maybe a little less, half a teaspoon. That, and then black pepper. Don't be afraid to touch raw meat either. So, so steak is ready to go. Remember I said you don't want to ever cross-contaminate? So you, don't, you know this is like raw meat now. So what I could do is um, I can move this over to, oh yeah, that'd be great. Over here. And we'll let that rest. Um, uh, trick, when you have a cutting board and you don't want it to be slippery, get a towel that's wet, lay it on, and uh, actually it'll stay pretty, pretty stable. Uh, if, so it's like a little trick. Okay, now we got potatoes. These potato chips, I would say you would cut to about a quarter of an inch. And they're gonna be pretty thin because we're gonna be pan frying it uh, quickly. You know, in a way they're gonna be like potato wedges or whatnot, but we're gonna thin it. Then slice and be able to cook in a pan. Uh, potatoes take forever for like a baked potato, right? So this is like a quick trick for you guys to uh, use if you're just trying to get some starch or a uh, quick side that's tasty in. I'll show you how to season it afterwards. But um, three finger rule. So I'm protecting everything. Everything uh, is behind my middle finger. See, if you guys can see that. So if I'm cutting, it is only hitting like this. The knife's only hitting the back of my uh, knuckle. So. And when you're cutting, make sure things are uniform, as uniform as possible, uh, because then they'll all cook evenly. If you have one piece that's thicker uh, and one piece is thin, uh, you're, it's just not going to be consistent. One will be overcooked or the other will be undercooked.
This uh, kitchen knife is actually so much better than the knife I had freshman year. I went out and bought a knife to do the, the uh, barbecue and uh, man, I could not cut anything with that. I tried to cut myself, not really, <laughs> but, but it was terrible. So, okay. For safety reasons with this knife, I'm gonna just be done with the potatoes here because I can't balance that anymore. Um, so this, we'll, we'll have it ready now because uh, we can start cooking. So this is ready to go so I can just pan fry it. Uh, I think right now we'll head over to the other area. So I would say um, if you're gonna be in apartments, uh, they're gonna have like the, the heating element, right? It's not gonna be an open flame. I love open flame, like free range gas uh, or gas ranges. Uh, free, free range, you know, it's so awesome, like um, having gas is great. But when you're at home, I would say the setting would be, let's say out of eight, uh, maybe seven or six, depending on how much meat you have. You never want to pack the pan either, because that also reduces the, the heat. The more things you put inside a pan, you know, the heat's going to be distributed to that. So if I'm stuffing this with meat completely all the way around, it's going to steam the meat, which is going to be nasty. So uh, this one can actually fit two of those pieces, but uh, I'm going to show you how one is. So get oil in the pan. I'd say about a tablespoon. And let that oil come to temperature first. Uh, so it's kind of smoking. This is a nice range. Uh, and then, let's see, we can test it out. Um, I'll use my hands, I'll show you. When you're laying the steak into the pan, always lay away from you. So that's the sound you want. You hear that? That's nice. So now it's going to caramelize. It's going to be really good. Um, and you're, you're welcome to come in and see it if you want. I'm not afraid of the splattering. So when you're cooking in an apartment, don't feel like, you know, if it's smoking a lot, add a touch more oil and then it'll kind of stop uh, the smoke a little bit. And feel free to take the pan off the heat. Nobody says they have to keep it on, especially if you're working with the hot plates that are in the apartments. Uh, you can turn the heat down, but it's still pretty hot. So just take it onto another element um, and I'll show you. So right now this piece of steak is in there and you, we're, we're caramelizing the bottom. It's gonna come out with a, a nice crisp flavor like you get in the steakhouses. So while we're doing that, what we can do is I wonder if another range would work for me. Hello, is it me you're looking for? So this is gonna be for the potatoes. Uh, for the potatoes, I actually want to get enough oil to coat the pan, the bottom of the pan. Because I want uh, the potatoes to be in contact with the oil and you want it to be uh, on a single layer. You don't want it to be stacked on top of each other so they could crisp up pretty well. So right now you can check the meat if you want. Now let's see. Usually if you have tongs, that's better. See how nice that color is? So now you can flip it. So everybody can see that. And let the pan do the work too. So when you're cooking this, you know, kind of uh, tilt it around. And one thing I like to do, the reason why I have this spoon is, um, let me see, for now I'll hold it like this. I like to baste the steak. This is a secret to getting it more flavorful. All the flavor is coming back into the pan. I'll tilt the pan a little bit, take some oil, put it back over on the steak. So it's like redistributed from the top down. Any questions so far? And then the other pan's ready to go. So I'm gonna grab the potatoes. Uh, and is everything okay? Let's see. Cool. You should really use tongs at home, but I'm just doing it like this because uh, for the sake of time, and I gotta grab a plate. Nice. 
turn the other heat down. This is about done. So, yep, see how it's sprung back a little bit? I like to get it right into the edge of the pan and then let the fat do the work. So I'm gonna let that chill there and then here, going to turn Um, potatoes, I'm going to turn the heat in the back off. I don't need it. So we'll keep that going a little bit. Uh, the potatoes, sometimes if it's too many, you know, let's say you have a small pan, uh, then you can sort of um, do them in batches. All right, always in batches. It'll be crispier, it'll cook evenly. I'm going to grab some more plates. And uh, if somebody, do you guys see paper towels anywhere? If not, no, no worries. The reason is when you're frying things like this, you want to uh, line a plate with paper towels. It'll drain the grease and keep the thing crispy. But if it's not, we'll, we'll make do. So here's this. Um, what I'll do, let's take this out. Oh, cool. Fantastic. Thank you. And then for this. Oh. Um, throw that out there. The steak will be on this plate resting, like I said. Um, Get all that flavor, one last basting on the top. Let it chill. And potatoes are best whenever they just kind of came off the heat um, to season. So I'm gonna just kind of go through this real quick. I forgot to, oh no, oh yeah, I did bring it. Sugar, salt, this stuff. So all I have is garlic powder, paprika, and salt and some sugar, uh, which comes in packets. <laughs> um, so from there, we go ahead and season. Usually, uh, I do the same amounts for everything, uh, minus the salt. So for this, I'm gonna say I'm using about um, maybe a quarter teaspoon of salt, enough to just sort of sprinkle on top. And then from there, uh, dang, I need another spoon. Excuse me, guys. It's weird because it's not my kitchen, so I don't know where everything is. Or I do, that's why I'm going to go get them. Nice touch of um, paprika sprinkled on top. And then garlic powder. Dang it. Maybe this is not the most efficient. Um, the cool thing is if you mess up like this, uh, you don't have to season the other side. Is this pretty okay to follow along so far? Am I, uh, cool. And these will be done very soon. So another cool thing is, let's say you, you did a screw up, right? You can wait for those to finish and then kind of mix it all together and you still have like the same amount of seasoning uh, on everything. Um, so several ways, I mean the color, you can tell by the color. Another is stabbing a fork through it. So I cut this thinly on purpose because I know that it's gonna cook evenly by the time that the color on the outside is uh, to that doneness, that crispy doneness, then the uh, inside's gonna be uh, ready to go as well. But if it's a thicker potato, you know, a thicker slice, 
stab a fork right through it and see if it just like goes in uh, and comes out pretty easily. That's how you know it's done. Great question. So see how the color, and sometimes they float to the top too when you fry it. But this is uh, pretty much good. And if you want to get fancy with it, you can also garnish this with some uh, parsley. Garnish just means decorate. Um, So there's that. I'm leave that there. Um, and then from there, let's give it a good mix. So one downside of doing this sort of potato, because it's so fast, um, and it's just done in a simple pan, is that um, it can, it's not gonna be like as, as crispy as like, uh, one of my favorite things to do is like oven baked, oven roasted potatoes with rosemary and stuff. You put it in and it takes me about 45 minutes to do. Uh, this is a, kind of a shortcut recipe. Maybe you just gotta have dinner one night and you're craving something a little bit, uh, uh, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? It's like a treat. It's, uh, oh, what? A little, yeah, okay, we'll go with starch. A little starch, a little. So, so this is going to be more for taste. Um, if we go back over there, I would love to uh, share this with you guys. Uh, some of you in here seem like the creative type, so you can also, uh, if I were presenting this, I'd you know probably line the potatoes on the side or something, uh, get it higher up. But right here, it's just all about taste and flavor right now. Um, and we're going to taste through, and I'm going to have you guys kind of help me out too. Is like what could have been improved on it, because I don't know everything, right? Um, I just kind of threw things together. I knew how to cook it. Maybe seasoning has to change, but uh, we can fix that. So I'm gonna wash my hands again, just because I still have like raw meat on the other side, and we'll dig into this. So um, the steak has been resting because I was uh, doing the potatoes while the steak's resting, so it's, it's good and it's ready to cut. So let's see uh, what it looks like. Dun, dun, dun. So it's a nice uh, medium, I'd say. So here, um, basically grab a fork and tell me what you guys think. I'm gonna cut it to like, if medium is not what you like, that's completely understandable. I won't be offended either. Uh, I'll be fine. I'll live. Yeah, so the outside has color. It's not gray um, and it's caramelized. So dig in guys and tell me what you think. Who's gonna be the first to step up? And we have plenty, man. It's like, we're going to just... And the potatoes as well. Feel free to, you know... There you go. Does everyone have one? Can I get one more? Cool. Um, let me see. I'm cutting, I'm carving. Yeah, go for it. Let me get out of the way. Let me serve you guys. So I feel like the potatoes might need seasoning on different sides. Um, as far as the steak goes, I think I got it. Uh, I haven't tried it, so we'll see. Yeah, just go. There's like... Remember I said we're all family? Dig in. Get in on the action. Uh, so thoughts, I couldn't use, is it okay? Was this a knife that I used, was this mine? I don't remember, you know, we're family. Yeah, they don't seem terribly crispy. Yeah, 
Nice, nice. So the cool thing is, you saw how I did it. Um, so to make them crispier next time, uh, uh, kind of do what I said at the beginning, line the plate with paper because then all that grease will drain and then we'll let it sit, then it'll become crispy. Good, good catch though. So um, seasoning I can show you guys, it's just to taste, but um, it's paprika, garlic powder, salt, and um, some uh, sugar. So I'll show you how to mix that in a bit, but uh, any, any thoughts, any other thoughts? What do you guys think? Yeah, they a little less uh, black pepper on the steak, but that might just be a personal. Right, no, that's definitely, I, I agree. Um, so that's that's something uh, you, you can adjust in your steak. But hey, great, great feedback. To each is his own. That's like the cool thing that demonstrates. Like some people might have wanted saltier. Some people may say, oh, it's too salty. Uh, but the more you taste, you know what you like. So, but uh, did, did everybody get to try? And so it's good. So I uh, hope you guys saw that that was easy. So who's ready to do this? Um, let me see. So how many pans do we have back there? So